Hi, everybody. It's Hilary here from We Love Smart Keto. Great to see you. And today we're going back to basics and talking about keto and the basics, uh, the basic requirements, the basic approach uh, for keto. So um, we've uh, got a whole bunch of new members and I think it's a really good time to be talking about that. So uh, give me a, a like or a hi or a wave to let, uh, let me know you're watching. Uh, if you just put a one in the comments, I'll know that you're watching it live. Uh, and if you put a two, I'll know that you're watching it uh, on the replay. So great to have you here. Um, and today uh, we're going to go back to basics and talk about the fundamental principles of the keto lifestyle. So let me know uh, in the comments. I'm really interested to uh, know what's the reason that you started keto. Um, hi, Alex. Great to great to see you on, on the on the stream. Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, so we're going to just go back to the basics, and um, I'm sure that some of you and have been members of the group for for quite a while um, will know all these uh, fundamental principles uh, very well. But it's important to always um, go back to the basics and just to remind ourselves because we can tend to drift a little way uh, away from them. I mean, if you look at sort of the great dancers. You know, they always go back to the basic steps, the basic, uh, the basic movements. You know, someone like, uh, you know, Darcy Bustle is a wonderful uh, ballet dancer from the UK or, you know, Rudolf Nureyev, for example, um, you know, Martha Washington. Uh, you know, they would always go back uh, very much to the basics and uh, go back and do that fundamental practice. So, yes, what's the reason that you're, you're doing keto? What's the, the main reason? So for Alex, it's to get her A1C, so her long-term marker under control. Uh, you know, and similarly, that's why why I started was really to manage my weight um, and uh, keep, and also to improve uh, my immunity because uh, uh, keto will do that. Keto lifestyle will definitely help with that in a very short amount of time, as well as um, you know to to manage my weight and keep my blood health markers really on track. That was that was my main reasons for starting. So I'm really interested in in what your reasons are. So let's just talk quickly about the um, benefits, the benefits of keto. Um, so uh, one of the benefits of keto is obviously if we're wanting to lose weight, you know, so it's pretty effective for that. It's very effective for that. Um, but probably the most shortest term impact of it is to really improve our metabolic health. You know, and our metabolic health markers is things like our, um, our fasting glucose, what's our glucose level, our sugar level in our blood when we wake up in the morning. What's our A1C? And you go, what on earth is my A1C? So your A1C is uh, basically an indicator of your average level of um, glucose in your blood over a three-month period. So it's sort of a long-term marker. It's, it's kind of like a protein buildup on your red blood cells. Uh, it's called an A1C, uh, and that's a, a measure of that. Uh, the other one is your uh, waist measurement. So for women, I think that's uh, for women um, who are not BAME, so who are not Black, Asian, or of uh, ethnic extraction, uh, that is, I think, uh, I must get it wrong, 88 centimetres round the waist. And uh, if you are sort of a South Asian or, or BAME extraction, then uh, it's a bit lower. I think it's 80 centimetres. It's just sort of a, a different uh, morphology. Um, and uh, that's so there's sort of a number of key markers uh, that those are three of them. I'm not going to go into all of them. I've been through them before and I can do it again uh, another day. So let's just talk about uh, the uh, what keto is and, and what it isn't. So fundamentally, the, you know, there's a lot of benefits around uh, keto. It will also reduce our inflammation, uh, you know, and that's um, an inflammation is one of a low inflammation is one of the key things that helps us to uh, respond if we you know if we pick up um, a bug or whatever that uh, will really help us um, so let's talk about uh, the fundamental principle of keto well the key principle of keto is that what we're wanting to do is to keep the hormone level in our body insulin to keep that that low now why do we want to do keep that low well, the principal reason we want to keep that low is that the main thing, it does a lot of things, but the main thing that insulin does is it says, hey, you've got some glucose in your bloodstream. There's too much in there. Let's stuff it in your in the in the fat cells. That's what it needs to do. All your um, says off you go glucose into the fat cells. We're going to store you for a rainy day. 
And what can happen over time is if you've got too much glucose in your blood persistently, is that that insulin response can can break down and it and your body becomes resistant to responding to insulin perhaps because your fat cells are already full uh, and you're not no longer able to to respond and eventually it'll do things like uh, you'll you'll get become more overweight um, and all because your insulin your insulin levels go we really need to be higher you know with the blood glucose isn't going into the into the fat cells so we need to up the amount of insulin we've got and so that just it's just a um, a, a vicious cycle and and so you can't actually then get your insulin low enough to allow the fat to come out of the cells you get elevated uh, uh, glucose in your blood and that will then start to cause some corrosion in your in your blood vessels so uh, you know it can potentially lead to heart issues so not great so the key thing that we're trying to do with the keto lifestyle is keep our insulin levels low um, and then what that will do is um, is eventually if we uh, it will allow the glue, the fat to come out of the fat cells and we'll start to burn um, our, the fat in our fat cells uh, as an energy and that will then break down into ketones in our bloodstream. So that's what we're really aiming to do. So first of all, we're trying not to eat too much glucose, uh, try and make that as minimal as possible, um, not trying to eat any starchy, any starchy foods, uh, any sugary foods, so that we're not adding more sugar to the system. Then our liver will then also, uh, very clever, will actually make its own glucose as well out of uh, proteins and things that we have in our body. So, and then once that's depleted, and it, because it's only got a limited amount that it can make, then it allow, it goes, oh my goodness, what else am I gonna get? The, where am I gonna get my energy from? I need some energy, particularly our brain needs a lot of energy. And so it'll go, oh, look, I've got all these um, these uh, fats stored in my, in my fat cells, I'm gonna go off. Uh, and get that and it will get it in order and first of all it will get it from the fat that's stored around your organs and that's the most dangerous kind of fat so it will get it from the closest one so that's the first type of um, fat that will go so on the keto diet even if you don't look like you've lose, lost weight or you don't feel like you've lost weight you've, but you've been doing keto for a few weeks um, that's the first place that it will go and get it is from around that dangerous fat if you like that's around our, our organs so you might not see anything visible on the outside but you're definitely still improving your health and then uh, um, and obviously what we're trying to do is to make sure that we're able to release the, the fat from that fels, fats, the fat cells. We're trying to be insulin sensitive because then that just has so much benefits uh, for so much uh, so for so much of our, our body. And it also helps us avoid those uh, sugar lows that you get. I don't know if you've sort of ever eaten a, if you need your afternoon pick up and you pick me up and you're, oh, I better go and get some, some chocolate. That'll give me a pick, pick me up. And then you feel good for like 10 or 20 minutes and then, oh my goodness, I suddenly feel exhausted and I need to sleep. And that's because what happens is your insulin has has lifted, has, has risen in order to pick up, deal with the glucose that you've put in the system. And then it goes, oh, and then suddenly it puts too much glucose uh, into your fat cells and suddenly you don't have any energy. But uh, your insulin is still too high to allow the fat to fat come out of the fat cells to um, to give you some more energy. So that's why you get those peaks and troughs. Excuse me. <coughs> and so what we're doing with the keto lifestyle is you really, really even out. So, you know, if you track your, uh, if you have a continuous uh, blood glucose monitor, which I sometimes play with just for a bit of an experiment, and what you'll really notice is if you eat something sugary is you'll, you get this big spike in your, in your blood sugar levels and then it goes down. And if you're insulin resistant, it goes down slowly. If you're insulin sensitive, it goes down a bit more quickly. But if you eat a keto lifestyle, what you'll see is that your your blood glucose levels will track in a very, very narrow band. <coughs> so you'll see that it will go down uh, quite, um, it, you know, raise very slowly after a meal and then it will lower quite slowly uh, as well because you really haven't raised your blood glucose levels. So you almost get a flat line and it's really, really instructive. So... Excuse me, I've got a little frog in my throat today and I forgot to bring any water. So we've talked about, you know, some of the benefits of, of ketosis um, and how you know you're in ketosis is, is you can you can feel it sometimes in your body by your energy levels, you know, not getting that crash of, you know, oh, after I've had dinner, I need to sleep um, or after I've had, you know, my lunchtime meal, I, I need to sleep. But you can also measure it through um, measuring the ketones in either your breath 
or your urine or your um, blood. And we're not going to talk about that particularly today. And what I read, and we've got some other posts and uh, information about that. What I really want to talk about uh, today um, is uh, just to talk about how we measure, um, sorry, not how we measure, what uh, the keto lifestyle is. You know, what, what does the diet consist of? So it's interesting, you know, we, I don't know about you, but I eat food um, and I eat food that's as unprocessed as possible. So I try to eat it as close as possible to the natural form. Um, and we hear this term macros and really that's just kind of groups, components that are in our food. They're the macro just means big. So it's just the big components that are in our food. Our fats, protein, and carbohydrates or, or starch. Now, there's only one of those that we actually don't need. They're not all essential. And what we don't need is carbohydrates that we can survive perfectly well uh, without carbohydrates. The Inuit, for example, uh, live well without uh, carbohydrates. Nations that, you know, uh, groups that focus very much on fishing and eating fish, you know, for example, Pacific nations, they don't particularly uh, eat it. Well, they didn't in the past before they had uh, uh, things like taro. They didn't eat a lot of uh, carbs and they really, you know, it's really not an essential thing. You know, in the fall when there's, you know, carbohydrates, uh, you know, lots of uh, fruits and nuts and berries, you know, in the past we, we used to eat a lot of those to be able to store, you know, our fat for the winter. You know, we're in a different world now than in the past and we really don't need to do that. You know, there are very few nations in the world where uh, you need to do that, thankfully. So carbohydrates are not essential, but our bodies, our minds tell us that we want them um, because of this historical, this ancient thing that we have where, you know, um, some food that's got some extra energy in it for us as humans in the past when we're living in the savannas and the prairies, very useful for us to, to take in, but it's absolutely not essential. So on the keto lifestyle, we have, uh, you know, we say that you need uh, less than 20 grams of net carbs. So that's the carbs that not, that's not fibrous. So if you eat broccoli or spinach, most of that is fibrous. Um, and so the net carbs is just the bit that we can absorb. So, you know, sugar, for example, that's 100% absorbable. Uh, similarly with potatoes, most of that is absorbable. Um, rice, white rice in particular, most of that we can, can absorb. And, and what that does, even though it might be a complex carb, it still will break down basically into sugar molecules, into glucose molecules in our, in our blood, or worse, fructose. As sugar is uh, glucose and fructose, and fructose can only be processed by the liver as a toxin. So it will break down, it will elevate in our blood. So any kind of carbohydrate will do that. So on a strict keto, it's less than 20 grams of net carbs, and that is not a target that is a ceiling. So we're not aiming to get to 20 grams of net carbs. We're considering that as a ceiling. So if we're not eating carbs, then what are we eating? Well, the next thing that we need is protein. And the reason that we need protein is we need that uh, for, you know, all the amino acids that uh, protein breaks down into. We need that for, you know, our muscles and our bones and, and, and keeping a healthy brain. So we need we need protein. Too much protein is is not is not good, but we need the right amount of protein. If also if we eat too much protein, you know, our um, our liver can break that protein down into eventually into glucose and that can also get stored. So with protein, we need a moderate amount of protein. We need the right amount of protein you know, to be able to sort support our muscles and our bones and our brains and our, and our organ function, but, but not too much. So, for example, for a woman, uh, that's one to two grams of uh, protein um, that we need for um, uh, every kilogram of our lean body weight. So that's our, that's our body weight without, without our fat. So if you're five foot one, for example, and you weigh 48 kilos, I'm sorry, I don't have that in pounds in my head, um, but you need about 90 grams of protein a day, which is about a, 150 grams. So what's that? So that's six ounces of, uh, of uh, if somebody knows the conversion and could pop it in the chat. I'd really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so you need about 150 grams. If you're 90 grams of, of uh, protein per day, that's about 150 gram, uh, you know, piece of meat or, or chicken or fish. Um, and if you're a vegetarian, you can still get it. It's through pulses, through lentils, uh, things like that. So you, you just need a, a little bit more 
uh, pulses. And you can absolutely be uh, do keto on vegetarian lifestyle or even vegan lifestyle. If you're vegan, then you just need a B12 supplement as well because you can't get that uh, uh, through any uh, vegetable, vegetarian products or vegan products. Yeah, that's the one supplement that, that vegans need. But it's perfectly possible to do um, uh keto on a vegetarian vegan or meat um, meat eating omnivore lifestyle or even in fact carnivore completely uh, carnivore lifestyle so uh, so we've said we want to keep our carbohydrates as low as as possible um, and then we want to have a, a moderate amount of, of protein and the best quality protein that you can afford don't need to go organic grass-fed I do because uh, we're very lucky here in Australia to have, you know, some fantastic quality of that at a reasonable price, but definitely buy the best quality that you can afford. And then the last thing that we want to put in is fats. OK, and the aim of fats is is uh, so the balance is fats and the aim of really the, the fats is uh, really to keep us full, to keep us satiated. And uh, it's both the protein and the fat um, will will promote our satiety and it will enable you to go longer between uh, meals uh, because with keto, what we want to do is snack as little as possible. We want to give our system enough time to rest and digest um, and, and have a break from food and allow our body to go, okay, well, I need to go and get some time in the fat stores. So if you're uh, constantly grazing, uh, you're going to be constantly putting um, – energy into your system and you won't allow your system to go uh, and uh, build uh, break down the fat and build up uh, those ketones the ketones are really just an indicator of uh, burning the fat uh, it's not really kind of an aim in itself it's, it's just showing us that it's working so with the fats uh, tell me what kind of fats you you like to eat what's what sort of, what sort of preferred kind of fat on a, on a keto diet I'd, I'd be really interested to uh, to know. I'm just going to give you a few guidelines here. Uh, first up, there's a type of fat that you want to cut out completely. Even though it's a fat, it, it's really not advisable to eat, and that's uh, industrial seed oils, right? So, um, which are otherwise known as vegetable oils. So, you know, Crisco, canola, um, sesame oils, unfortunately, peanut oils, all those sorts of oils, because they go through um, a process that's quite industrial that industrialized to make them you know there's like industrial solvents and things used to extract um the um oil from those from those seeds and from from those nuts so uh we don't want to be doing that they're they're not a natural thing they're quite an industrialized process um and they're linked to adverse health outcomes so we really don't want to be having those kinds of uh those kinds of fats if you can have fats that are actually integrated with the protein that you're eating so you know an oily fish like a salmon or a trout or a mackerel or sardines absolutely excellent because it's got kind of the fat uh, integrated uh, within it uh, similarly if you've got a steak with a bit of fat on the edge of it perfectly fine to to have also um also uh, just uh, fat in as natural state as you can so avocados for example olives you know they have the fat integrated with them but again just be a little bit careful because you don't want to overeat them if you're trying to lose weight similarly nuts um just be careful some of the nuts are a bit higher in carbs so things like cashews and peanuts a bit higher in carbs so be very careful with those but similarly you know things like almonds macadamias pecans very good uh, again you know it's very easy to eat handful handfuls of them because they are delicious and nutritious but just be aware that uh, you know that can push the the calorie load the energy load in your body up and if you're trying to lose weight you know perhaps just skip those for a while or keep it you know to you know one handful a day literally um and then uh, we have the uh, solid fats so things like coconut oil very good uh palm oil is also okay but i, I don't personally take that because uh, of the sustainability aspects you know things like the deforestation uh, in in Indonesia for for palm oil. they basically deforest the native forest and replace with palm oil I've done some work in Indonesia in the past and taken a helicopter uh, you know over uh, native forest there and you can see the palm oil plantations and it, it's not great to see and so personally I don't choose to have palm oil but if it's from a sustainable source then I think that's okay and then we have you know things like lard suet uh, uh, butter uh, perfectly good as a as a as a fat also, cheese um, is fine. 
uh, and cream. Again, just be aware of, you know, not overdoing it if you are uh, trying to lose weight as well, and that's fine. And then in terms of uh, liquid uh, fats, then really stick as much as you can to uh, the monounsaturated uh, liquid fats. So that's uh, olive oil, especially extra virgin olive oil, because um, the, the, the less um, aromatic ones have been pressed a number of times and it's sort of the dregs of the pressing. And so it, the, the more times you have to process it, uh, the more uh, industrialized it, it is, if you like. I do use... Uh, a light olive oil when I'm making mayonnaise just because I don't like the strong taste of extra virgin olive oil in mayonnaise. Um, but in general, I, um, I will use extra virgin olive oil. I'll also use macadamia oil when I'm um, uh, frying things because it's got a very high smoking point. Uh, avocado oil is also very good uh, for, for cooking with. And I believe safflower oil is also um, yeah, sort of a healthy oil to have a monounsaturated oil uh, to have as well. So just be you know very very mindful of what uh, what we're what we're having. So for example, a, a good lunch would be you know a piece of a piece of fish uh, with um, you know a side salad dressed with extra virgin olive oil, or if you want something warm, you know maybe some tossed spinach, tossed broccoli. You know, maybe some. Uh, sometimes I'll toast up some slivered almonds and uh, just have that as a garnish on the top, perhaps with a little. Uh, you know, I might put a bit of butter in there as well, just to give it a bit of flavour. So you know, we can eat really tastily and healthfully um, on uh, on the keto lifestyle. I actually really enjoy it. Um, you know, the things that we need to cut out is first of all sugar, and if you still have a, a sweet tooth. Uh, then, you know, use some artificial sweeteners. Just be mindful of the artificial sweeteners uh, that you use. So erythritol um, is good. Uh, also, uh, stevia uh, is good. You know, we want to stick, stay away from things like the, the aspartames and things. Monk fruit is also good. And the reason we, we want to limit, it, limit which um, sweeteners we have is because some of them, even if they're not raising our blood glucose level, they can still raise our insulin levels. So we want to be uh, very careful about that. And uh, we want to cut out, obviously, grains, uh, potatoes, white rice, any vegetable that grows under the ground, uh, we want to to avoid as a sort of a matter of principle. There are some that are a little bit lighter uh, in, in carbohydrates, but, you know, I just find it easier to have a simple rule. If it's a tuber, uh, then, then, I don't, uh, then I don't eat it. Uh, in terms of fruit, uh, often get asked what kind of fruit uh, can we have and uh, the uh, simple response uh, to that is we don't need fruit fruit is not a necessary part of our diet much as it's delicious but if you do love fruits then stick with the lower sugar fruits so that's basically raspberries blueberries um, and uh, strawberries they're they're all uh, okay on a on a keto lifestyle but again you know have them as a little bit of a treat they're not kind of a staple part uh, of what we're eating things like um so that's a, a helpful thing to 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 be aware so green leafy vegetables uh fantastic you know so always in my cupboard i've got you know broccoli cabbage spinach you know i love a a really nice um uh coleslaw with uh you know i'll make it with um some garlic salt, uh, some mayonnaise that I make myself because the ones off the shelf pretty much have industrial seed oil, so I always make my own mayonnaise and, you know, some 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 cabbage and I might just, uh, you know, perhaps put uh, some sesame seeds, toasted sesame seeds or something through it, toss it through, you know, with a piece of fish, just a, a really delicious meal. Um, so there's some suggestions uh, around, uh, well, some talk about what the keto lifestyle is. Um, you know, it's people sometimes really make it complicated uh it's not really that complicated what we want to do uh you know is eat things that are as close to nature as possible uh cut out the carbohydrates cut out the industrial uh, seed oils and you know sometimes people say well you know i need a, a menu plan of exactly what i need to to eat you know i think you know culturally we all have different cultures we all come from different different backgrounds different sort of traditions in our families about what we like to eat you know, what you like to eat might not be what I like to eat. And so, you know, what I prefer to do is to give us a set of principles and a set of choices about the way that we want to, to do the keto lifestyle. So we're going to finish up uh, in a minute. I'm really interested in, in what your insights are 
uh, into uh, the keto lifestyle. You know, what are the things that I've talked about today? You know, what's what's something a distinction, something that you'd forgotten, or perhaps a sort of a, an additional distinction that you've made today around uh, around the keto lifestyle. Uh, and I always do call it a lifestyle because I don't think it's a diet. I think it's a, a way of eating for life. And there are a few more things to it than just eating. There's, you know, relaxation, uh, there's sleep, there's also potentially fasting if you choose to do that. Uh, you know, there's a number of components to it. Um, but the, obviously the fundamental part and the thing that moves the needle the most for everybody is, is the nutrition uh, of it. And so it's really, so I like to call it a lifestyle rather than a diet because it's a whole a whole philosophy of, of the way that we, we choose to live. And, and I believe that once you're on it, you can do it for life. And uh, there's no reason not there. There are plenty of choices. And I think actually that the world around us is, is changing. And, and uh, you know, what was previously seen as a little bit uh, off the mainstream is now seen really as mainstream. So I hope you find that useful. Um, there are a couple of questions that we've had that I just want to to answer. So um, and uh, hopefully, Addy, maybe you can just put in uh, links to uh, uh, to the people who've asked these questions. The first one is: Is Atkins considered keto? Uh, well, Atkins is really uh, from the 1970s and is very much keto. The original Atkins is very much keto. Absolutely, um, you know, it was regarded as. Uh, uh, a diet that was a little bit on the fringe or very much on the fringe at the time that it was brought in. Uh, I think one of the reasons it never really became mainstream is because Dr. Atkins uh, never allowed a scientist to come in and, and do the research on the back of, uh, you know, his clinical experience in New York. And I think he was a bit of an ordinary character by all accounts. Um, so yes, Atkins is most definitely keto. What is less keto is the new Atkins diet because they've added in a, a bit more carb and it's a bit more carbohydrates, not so uh, not so uh, pure as in terms of keto, but definitely uh, the uh, original Atkins is. If you're talking about the Atkins products that you can buy off the shelf, you know, my view is that uh, we need to stay away as much as we can from processed food, from processed food. So if it has five or more ingredients in it and you don't recognize some of those ingredients, then don't don't buy it would be my recommendation. You know, we need to be sticking to as close to nature uh, as we can. I'm, I don't buy those Atkin products. I can't really advise you on them. But uh, that would be my sort of rule of thumb is look on the back of the packet. Are all has it got five or fewer ingredients? Uh, are they all keto appropriate? And you know, if it's an additive or a preservative, then I would suggest you know sticking away from st staying away from it uh, if you can. And then the other question I think we've had from Terry, um, our one, one of our wonderful members, uh, Terry, um, is can uh, make some suggestions about what else I can eat for breakfast other than eggs. Absolutely, Terry. Well, personally, I skip breakfast. I, I don't often eat breakfast. Maybe once in a while on the weekend, I eat breakfast. But uh, yes, uh, eggs can get a little monotonous, even though you can cook them multiple ways. Um, so my suggestion uh, for breakfast uh, is if, if you've got a little bit of time the night before, you could make a chia pudding. A chia is a, is a seed. Uh, you need to soak it and you could soak it in um, uh, almond milk, uh, for example, with a bit of flavoring, you might want to put a bit of artificial sweetener in it. If you like a bit of a uh, bit of like it a little bit sweet, a little bit sweet, um, you can make it add some cocoa to it, make it a chocolate chia pudding. There are plenty of recipes, and we we might post some in in the group, and uh, that'll make a nice sort of a pudding for you in the morning. And uh, some coconut chips, for example, coconut flakes on top. Um, I also like um, oh sorry, in my chia pudding I often put a bit of mesquite. Uh, which is a uh, it's a South American powder and it has a, a really nice flavor to it. Um, and then you can also uh, I might put cacao nibs, for example, on top of it, some coconut, uh, you know, maybe a, a handful of toasted seeds, for example. And that's a, a bit of a wonderful and, and different uh, different breakfast. And, and perhaps if you're feeling like berries, a handful of raspberries, for example, I might sometimes just make a, a raspberry compote which is just basically uh, raspberries in, uh, in, just put them on the stove and allow perhaps with a little bit of water and just allow them to um, stew down just for maybe six minutes and then uh, pop it through a sieve so you haven't got any seeds. And that's a, a really nice kind of syrup without any sugar in it uh, that you can put also uh, on your chia pudding. So that would also be my suggestion. My other 
Uh, favorite breakfast is um, some smoked salmon uh, with some avocado and cherry tomatoes. And sometimes I might put micro herbs on that if I can get them in the supermarket because they always die when I when I grow them. Um, or some sprouted seeds, for example, just that, that and that's a bit of a nice uh, a nice combo as well. So almost like a sort of a salad -y, uh, kind of breakfast would also be my suggestion. But, uh, you know, I do try and stick away from breakfast so that I'm doing sort of, you know, as a basic, uh, doing a 16-hour a um, non-eating phase uh, during my day. So I hope that's some good suggestions uh, for you. It's really great to have you guys here in the group. As I said, we've had quite a lot of new members recently. So absolutely lovely to have you here. Very much welcome. And uh, I hope that's useful for you. And uh, let me know any comments that you have in the group. Please keep posting your questions. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.